and the uh, enlightenment. Oh. <laughs> I guess my main job is to open people's ears. So Very good. That's what I can talk about more than anything. Um, so I go, so you're go that way. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, hi, I'm Ryan Churchill, and. Uh, I own Vassal High End Audio Home Theater. Uh, we got started about three years ago in 2019. Um, little, I'll let you kind of read my words and story there um, while I kind of talk about what, what's probably most important to me. Um, the last line is I'm obsessed with sound. Um, and that that's, you can see kind of my experiences that kind of played into that. Uh, my dad was, was a classical guitarist. Um, before he became a minister, <laughs> and so I just grew up listening to music, listening to live music, um, and listening to good live music, number one. Um, but, you know, my dad was also a hi-fi salesman, and he, he grew up playing three-chord rock and roll, um, and so when when we were, uh, when I was growing up, I got to listen to a lot of rock and roll, and enjoy things on his hi-fi system, um, which was kind of that old vintage pioneer stuff from the 1970s, and I loved it. And uh, when I, well, about eighth grade, I, I got introduced to uh, high-end audio at an actual high-end audio store. And that's where I kind of started catching the bug. Uh, I shouldn't say kind of. I mean, I caught the bug. Like, it was, it was immediate. Um, I was like, this is the best stuff I've ever seen. And I just, I fell in love with sound. Um, and a number of my experiences just have, have just played into that more and more. When I got into uh, college and, and was studying saxophone at the University of Kansas, I was, I was working with one of the greatest saxophone teachers in the country. Um, not from the standpoint of he's the best technician in the world, but the man is obsessed with sound. And he taught me how to diagnose sound problems. He taught me what great sound should sound like. And we, we, we dissected sound all the time. And so uh, that was a big part of it. And then I, then I spent time with band directors because I taught band for 16 years. And we did more diagnosing of sound. And like we dissected notes into, well, here's the beginning, here's the sustain, here's how it ends. And how does that play in now? How does that play in the speakers? Um, because when I, when, I, when I choose speakers for my shop or I choose electronics to run those speakers, Ultimately, what I want is something that reproduces a live sound. I've literally stood in front of, of ensembles full of doctoral and master's degree students. These people can play their horns. And when I stand on a podium in front of them and I, can, and I wave my arms, somehow that makes them actually play, which is really cool. Um, and you just, you get this sonic experience that is not easily duplicated. I stood in front of the, for two years when I did my master's degree, I stood in front of the largest college marching band in the country for two straight years. And it was awesome. I mean, if you've ever heard a brass line that big play, uh, it just knocks your socks off. It gives you goosebumps all the time. So when I go and I turn on the stereo, I need some feedback. I, need, I don't need just to hear it. I need to feel it. And I'm not talking about feel it like, you guys, when I say feel, a lot of you just went, went to boom systems and people's cars when they drive past your house and like tectonic plates are shifting beneath the surface of the earth, all right? That's not high-end audio, okay? Um, so let me, let me get a little bit deeper into that. Um, but, I, but I want things to sound right. Ultimately, a saxophone needs to sound like a saxophone to me, and a saxophone's actually in the room or a grand piano needs to sound like a grand piano is literally in the room with me. Um, and that's, that's what I do. Um, so well, we opened in 2019, and less than a year later, the world shut down, uh, as you guys know. And so that, that presented a few challenges for me. Um, the best part was I was really working on networking throughout 2019, uh, going into 2020. And I knew that was gonna be a big part of what I did for, for two or three years. Um, and will continue to be a big part, but I knew that that was gonna be the biggest part. I knew we weren't probably gonna be making a whole lot of money when I started the business during that time, so I was just like, you know, this doesn't kill us. We were prepared to not make money during 2020. Um, and so we were, I, I was okay, but I've gotta keep up with the networking stuff, and, and that was great. And I, it, I don't like Zoom, but wow, I'm so thankful for Zoom. It was such a, 
such a blessing during that time to maintain networking and that kind of stuff. Um, so why am I here? Uh, I'm still trying to build a home theater clientele base uh, and get the word out about that. Uh, home theater can be really, truly special. I've, I've just completed a theater uh, in uh, late January, and I was talking to the wife who didn't even want the theater, and she says to me, she goes, we're never going to another movie theater again. This is the best thing. She goes, it's clean. I don't have to step on, on sticky floors. I know what's actually on the arms of my chair. She goes, it's so great. And it sounds so wonderful. And it, it's such a great experience. Um, so that was cool. Um, reaching the audiophile demographic. Um, I like to say transcend my sphere of influence to reach audiophiles. Um, let, let me just put it like this. When I say transcend my, my sphere of influence, I talked for 16 years. You know who teachers hang out with? <laughs> teachers, okay? Yes. Have you noticed that people tend to hang out kind of with their demographic group, okay? They kind of do. Um, and it's not because we hate each other, we just we just naturally do that. And, and financially it works out too, because if I can afford it, you can probably afford it too, right? And so, uh, I files have a little bit higher level of income a lot of times than teachers, okay? Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to ex transcend that sphere of influence a little bit. Um, and I want to learn how to access the big fish, okay? And I'll talk about the big fish here in just a little bit. So misperceptions of hi-fi, I think a lot of people go back to the old Maxell commercials where the guy threw in the tape and, and it's like, it's so powerful, it's blowing his scarf backwards, his hair backwards, I don't have to worry about the hair part. Uh, uh, his martinis about to fly off the little table and that kind of stuff. And a lot of people have that misperception of hi-fi because oh, it's, oh, it's all, all about playing loud. In fact, we call them loudspeakers. Okay? High-end audio is not about being loud, okay? High-end audio is about revealing the music and honoring the intended sound, okay? Um, now, when we do play loud, we play loud really well, and it doesn't hurt your ears, okay? If you tried to play your sound bar at your house at the level I can play my home theater, you would be running out of your house screaming because your ears would just be bleeding. It doesn't sound good. There's not, there's not enough headroom in that sound for you to enjoy it. Um, so, anyway, biggest challenges. Well, I'm going to I'm tying my biggest challenges into some of my goals. Okay, so uh, the challenge is kind of listed at the bottom. But I'm trying to build a future cl high end clientele by reaching young professionals. Um, they're ultimately the future of my business. I want to lay that foundation with them. Um, but a lot of young professionals are at that point where they can finally afford some nice stuff, um, and and that's kind of cool. The problem with young professionals at this point is that they do a lot of their shopping online. And I'm not allowed to sell my stuff online. My manufacturers have people that have bought way more product than I'm able to afford and can put that online. So I need to figure out how to get past that. Um, and then, like I said, I've got friends in both places. You're all teachers, okay? Uh, but reaching those high end clients through, through friends, connections, networking partners who don't have high-end lifestyles. I, I work with a lot of great networking partners that do fantastic stuff, but they don't necessarily have high-end lifestyles themselves. Um, uh, and, or they may not even work in a high-end industry. Uh, what does uh, an audiophile customer look like? Well, it's primarily men uh, in the late part of their career. Their children are out of the house. Uh, they're entering retirement, and they're ready to get that dream stereo that they've literally been thinking about for decades, okay? We're not talking a couple of years. This has been on their radar since the day before they got married. <laughs> and their wife said no the next day. They're like, oh crap, man, I, I totally missed that. <laughs> she seemed so agreeable to stuff before that. <laughs> but not anymore. Um, so I'm trying, I want to reach those guys, you know, uh, who do you know that's reaching that point in their, in their career? Uh, this is another demographic that I don't want to ignore, and it's women, okay? And I'm actually really excited because there's a lot of women in the church today, okay? Uh, I'm primarily looking for young, single, professional women who love music. Uh, who like elegant and luxurious things. They love to share stuff with others, as in they love to talk about what they're doing on social media, that kind of stuff. Uh, and really, they have a strong independent streak in them. OK? 
Okay, now let's talk about why uh, uh, why women should be into high end audio. Okay, number one, if you look at research and data, you will find that women hear better than men. Oh, I didn't have to tell most of you that. <laughs> right? Okay, they they actually hear details and sound better than men. Okay. Um, they actually report a higher in level of enjoyment of music than men do, okay? So why aren't they buying the good stuff, right? Well, a lot of times it's because it's ugly, okay? How many of you guys don't want that big black box called a speaker sitting in your house, okay? What if we could disguise that? What if you could have something that doesn't look like a black box but sounds unbelievably good, okay? That's the kind of stuff that we're able to do. And so if I get young professional women before they're ever even married, you know, they can, they can decide what their decor is gonna look like in their house, okay? I have speakers that uh, have frames on them that are designed specifically to be hidden. They, the frame it can be a work of art. It can be custom art, okay? It can be family photos. There's a lot of ways to do audio and sound that's really cool. I've got speakers that I can actually put into the drywall and mud them in, you can paint over it, and you'll never know there's a speaker there until you start playing it, okay? Uh, there are some really great options out there that are really cool, and they, they work perfectly with your decor if you wanted to, okay? Yes? Okay, all right. Um, I'm a newbie. All right, no problem, no problem. So, uh, let's talk audiophile budgets. Um, Ten to twenty thousand dollars is pretty typical for a guy that's that's getting ready to hit that retirement age. Okay, um, these guys may or may not be show offs. Okay, uh, what, a lot of these guys have a secret hobby that few people know about. A lot of them are just hoping somebody will bring up high end audio first because they're a lot of them are kind of embarrassed about the fact that they, they want to spend that much money on the stereo. Um, <laughs> But here's the really funny, a lot of, it's not limited to this, but a lot of them are jazz and classical fans. So if you know people that go to a lot of jazz concerts live, when they go to classical concerts live, um, those are the people that really know what sonic energy is from an acoustical instrument. What, what does that actually feel like? And they're the ones that really crave those sounds a lot of times. Now, that said, a lot of them, they just like rock and roll. If, if you hear a guy talk about Steely Dan, he probably likes high end audio, okay? Um, so that's always cool. Uh, now, big fish. A lot of people are like, you're going, what are you talking about? A million dollars? Yeah, there, there are audio systems worth a million dollars. And I realize there's probably maybe two people in the city of Joplin that can afford a million dollar system. But I want access to that, okay? Um, because I, I have speakers within my distribution channels that reach half a million dollars for the pair, okay? Uh, and then imagine the electronics that can go along with that, right? Um, but these guys tend to like to spend money, okay? They like to show off their, their toys. They like to be treated really well. They kind of like to be catered to. Um, they don't mind spending money on exceptional quality. That doesn't mean they just blow their money. They like exceptional quality, right? Uh, so you'll see supercar owners. Um, they might own yachts, lake houses go on really luxurious vacations, go on vacations, go to vacation homes. Um, they, they know how to drop money because they've got money to drop, okay? Uh, so those are the people that, uh, even if I got one of those sales every year or two, you know, that kind of, that could send my kids to college, okay? Um, those would be all right for me, but um, I certainly don't, don't focus on those. It's these guys that I really focus on. Um, and those are the ones that I want access to the most. Um, and I like these sales. There's, there's two ways to go with audio. There's, there's home theater, well I shouldn't say two. There's two ways that, that are kind of primary to my business. There's home theater, which is your big 11 channel system, or more, <laughs> okay? Um, and it's awesome. And you, and you usually go with a really nice uh, projector, you go with a really nice projection screen, all that kind of stuff. Some people are just going, well, we'll just do a nice, nice TV, whatever, because uh, TVs are getting bigger and better. Um, but there's also people that just like to listen to music really well, and they want to listen to all the details. Um, so uh, these customers are buying two speakers and maybe a subwoofer, maybe a subwoofer. They're buying 
a really nice amplifier. They're buying a preamp, which is what you plug all your sources into, uh, and that kind of stuff. And maybe a turntable. And that's, and they're spending $20,000 on that. And you know, I had, a, I had a client that did this <laughs> with me. It was in September. I, I was, was kind of looking back at my, my uh, social media posts uh, on Facebook, and I looked at, at September, and I, uh, I kind of recall the story about, about this client, but uh, this client's name's Doug, he's over in Springfield. Doug bought a, a $20,000 system from me, I went over to his house, we set it up in his office, it was great. Um, and the next day, the very next day, I'm, I'm at my house, the phone rings, and it's Doug. And like, I can hear tears in his voice. Like, I can hear, and I was like, oh my God, what happened, Doug? <laughs> you know, and he goes, oh man, Ryan, I'm just sitting here. He goes, I cut out of work early today, so I come listen to my, this amazing sound system. And, you know, Charlie Watts just died, and I'm listening to the Stones, and it's like, Nick and Charlie are in the room with me, and my wife's making fun of me because I'm emotional about it. And, and, and I was like, that's awesome, Doug. You know, it just kind of warmed my heart. And then he goes, so now I need something for my living room. <laughs> Thank you, dude, Doug. Let's get something for your living room. So, anyway, Doug's got another system for his living room. Um, but those are the guys that I like. Um, they, they just, they have that emotional connection with music, and they just enjoy it. And it's something that they've been dreaming about literally for, for decades at this point. Um, so, so the products I, I carry, turntables. Uh, turntables are awesome. A lot of you guys think of turntables as that little $99 Crossley um, turntable that you buy at Best Buy, uh, which that is, it, it qualifies as a turntable, um, but it, it's not going to bring out the detail in your music. Uh, it, a lot of you guys may have grown up with, with or, or had, a, had a spouse that had one of those old techniques turntables. Those are pretty awesome. Uh, and those, those are pretty cool. Uh, things, DJs and that kind of stuff. Audio fi file turntables are a little bit different. Um, audio file turntables uh, are very, very much designed to pull out detail in the music. Okay, so we use higher end uh, needles. We use higher end cartridges that the needle is attached to, and because of that, we can find a lot more detail in the music, uh, and it creates a better sonic image. Um, it, it, there's a better sound image in front of you. And you know, it's really fun to do like an AV comparison between like a $250 <coughs> really nice needle, and people go, wow, that sounds awesome. And then I turn on a $1,300 needle, and they go, oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's, and they understand why those things make a difference. Um, you know, why, why you actually would spend that money. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about cell phones. How many of you guys would say this is your primary source for listening to music? Why? Because it's with you, it's convenient, right? It's right at your fingertips all the time, right? So, how many of you guys would say this is the best source of sound for listening? Uh, anyone? Anyone? No? All right, cool. What if we could get this connected to something that will be a great source of sound? And that, and a lot of you are like, well, yeah, I know about Bluetooth speakers. They're not a great source of sound. Just a typical Bluetooth, $99, it's better than this, okay? But we can definitely improve that uh, in big ways. We can, we can do whole home audio systems based off of your phone, okay? Multiple zones. I've got, I've got one system, uh, Blue Sound, their platform will run a 64 zone audio system. Now, most of you guys probably don't need a 64 zone audio system unless you have a castle in Dubai that none of us know about. Um, but it's, that's, those are the possibilities. You can start with one zone and just start adding zones a little bit at a time. And you can get high, high quality sound um, that is gonna be a, a big step above what you might be able to buy at the box stores. And the box stores might have some decent stuff, and a lot of people go, well, that's, that's the right price. When for another 100 bucks, or maybe 150 bucks, you could have stepped up the quality exponentially and not spent a whole lot more, okay? So uh, there's some really great opportunities with that. Uh, customer experience. First of all, when I, a lot of you guys probably don't frequent hi-fi shops, um, but I do. Um, you know, a lot of times I go to a hi-fi shop, 
and I'm stuck listening to the same five songs that they've chosen for the store. I'm enough under the radar, no one really notices me uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of, you know, digital music and that kind of stuff. So I'll play whatever you want to hear. <laughs> you know, you go to the store, we'll pull up my playlist. I've got Tidal. We can listen to high-end quality stuff all day long. Just about anything you want to hear. Metallica, they're very protective of their music, and I can't seem to get Metallica. Um, but, that's, but that's not that big of a deal to me. Um, also, my showroom, it's up in Carl Junction. Uh, it's small. It's not a very big showroom. Um, but it's one one on one. I do everything by appointment only, uh, because I don't want people driving to my shop and going, "Why is this guy never here?" Because I'm out on installs. Okay, uh, so I do it by appointment only. And a lot of people are like, I, I talked to some of my networking partners, like that seemed like kind of a weird thing until I did it, and then it made sense to have a one to one experience, because I could dedicate an hour, two hours of my time to talk to them about their system, and that was always good. Uh, being a dealer rep, that has its advantages over uh, buying, being a customer and buying something over the internet, okay? Uh, the number of people that I see go online and bash a lot of the popular brands, Denon, Marantz, Onkyo, Pioneer, great brands, all great brands, uh, but they had a bad experience. So it, came in, it came to them and it was broken, it wasn't working right. And then they call the manufacturer, and they did not get a good response from the manufacturer. The manufacturer's like, well, it's all your fault, and all that good stuff. Well, guess what? If a piece of equipment comes into my shop, and it's not working, guess who deals with that? I do. Guess who trusts me to deal with that? The manufacturer. When I tell them something's not working, they know that I want to sell more, they want me to sell more of their stuff, so they're gonna go, yeah, let's take care of that, okay? We're going to troubleshoot a couple things, and maybe maybe there's some stuff that I can fix. And once in a while, they, they actually come up with a solution over the phone. But most they can't do that with a typical customer. Okay, uh, a typical customer is not going to be allowed to open up the lid on their on their AV receiver and find the problem. Whereas I can, so we can either fix it in the shop before it ever goes out to the customer, or I can send it back and they send me a new unit that is working. Okay, and so that's a big advantage. And my customer never even knows about it. Unless I call them up and say, hey, I know you're expecting to get this this week. I'm sorry, had a problem. They're shipping me a new one. It'll be here next week, okay? And I've never had a problem griping me about that, okay? Because it saves them a lot of time that they don't have to deal with a, a manufacturer. Um, other products, you know, I see Power Shades over there. I'm actually a Power Shades dealer, so um, that's that's been a fun relationship to get a work with a local company uh, that's actually manufacturing some cool stuff. Uh, Power Shades has some really great products out there. Um, you can schedule your blinds to go up and down uh, on a regular schedule based on the season um, or kind of the daily rhythms of your life. Um, so that's that's a really cool thing. Uh, turntable cartridges. I refer to those as my gateway drugs um, because they I can sell I, my lowest price turntable cartridge is about thirty six bucks, and so if somebody walks in to my store to buy a turntable cartridge for thirty six dollars. Guess what else they get to experience? They get to experience nicer stuff, okay? And then they go, oh, maybe I should spend a little bit more on the cartridge. A lot of times we still spend money on that thirty six dollar cartridge, but we start talking about the plan for the next steps. And that's really a good thing for me. Uh, whole home audio, outdoor audio, those are always really fun. I'm working toward getting golf simulators, also another nice gateway drug, hopefully. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens on that. But golf simulators are really great for in the home. Um, and the company that I'm currently working with, which we've had a couple of names, but we haven't closed, the, we haven't closed it just yet um, for me to become a, a dealer or, or rep. Uh, but this company creates some really cool stuff. I, it's amazing. Like they've got different lies. They've got a platform that like changes angles so that you can practice your uphill lies, your downhill lies, your flat lies, uh, different surfaces. It's really cool. You can play in a tournament every single day of the year if you want to, um, which is pretty awesome as well. So, anyway, um, that's about it. So, I'm sorry. That's in blue, and I it's like completely. 
but uh, that's Vassal Audio uh, is my VassalAudio.com is my website, and then Vassal with H E for high end uh, at iCloud.com is my is my uh, is my email. So anyway, I guess we're ready for questions. Yes. So listening to that and just thinking about opportunities you could do to grow your business, if you've ever had the opportunity to tour Cobalt Boats in Independence, Kansas, if you're aware of them, high-end luxury boat manufacturer right here in our backyard, just have maybe if you reach out and have a conversation with them about right before they put in whatever stereo system that they're having, mm -hmm. that they give their clientele an option to go more high end and you do some kind of a revenue split. Okay. That I mean That's great. all they can do is say no if you ask. Right. And then the other thing I would suggest is that if you do digital advertising, I know some digital marketing companies aren't here today, but look at those high end places and geofence and digitally advertise to them, like Pinnacle Hills West, okay. down in Rogers, the homes are between eight and 1.9 million. Okay. So you, you never know. Okay, awesome. So I guess I never really considered, but like, this is, I'm, I'm dumb when it comes to all the digital stuff, which sounds weird because I'm a high end audio tech, <laughs> technology guy, but um, I really, the, the the social media aspect of this, that's that's one of my biggest challenges. Um, and having time to do it, number one. But you know, if you get on my Facebook page, you'll see there's, there's I, I put up a lot of content um, and I try to keep people engaged, but I need to get those, I need to get views converted into sales. And so that's not always happening, but yeah. Thank you, I so, love um, One thing I was thinking about is, is that I, I used to call them car dealers, RV dealers. And so especially with RV dealers, <coughs> You know, some of these people are spending a quarter million dollars on an RV coach. Right. You know, they probably want a good sample. Because they come with a okay, bad sample. Right. Not one you get. Right. So, you know, like Coach Flight, Mid America, some of those, you know, the tech ones for you to do. But the other thing is, and I was thinking about this, is especially like around the lake, like Grand Lake and Table yeah. Rock and all that. Have you thought about connecting with some landscaping homes? I have I have one landscaper that I'm working with on Grand Lake, and we're, we're doing our first project together. Okay. And we're yeah. hoping that turns into other things. Yeah, um, help you find some but, big fish. Yeah, yeah they, they've got some big <laughs> fish around the Grand Lake. So, yeah. Yeah. so I have to tell you guys one thing real quick. So I was in Carl Junction one day, and I, his car was there. And so I thought, I'm going to sit in, go and see Ryan. So I opened the door, and I mean, the sound was just like, whoo. But he was watching a movie. And I don't remember what movie it was, it was some action movie. And so come in and sit down. So you know, got these big plush seats. And, and we're sitting there, I mean, it's like these guys are shooting each other. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Better than any theater I've ever seen. Yeah, I won't watch private, saving private Ryan in there. I like, I'm, I'm literally concerned about PTSD. Okay, who's got a I was wondering if you um, thinking about high-end clients, uh, do you partner with um, interior designers? Uh, well, Shelly and I have talked a little bit, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Uh, we haven't really done a whole lot together just yet. But yeah, yeah. I was thinking uh, interior yeah. designers that would probably put you yeah. in contact with a lot of women yeah. who um, have high-end homes. Right. Um, another contact, maybe you were talking about RVs. There's Newell Coach mm -hmm. that does high-end custom uh, custom coaches yeah. or RVs for. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, with with interior designers, I did early on when I started the business. I was reaching out to interior designers, and I they wouldn't give me the time of day. Um, which, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they would more now. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to talk to you about this after this. Yeah. I need a stack of cards from each. Okay, sounds good. So I have a question. Yes. Um, so I held my hand up earlier, and I wasn't supposed to. So my apologies for that. But your demographic got women, and it yes. said young. Yes. Uh, a lot of that is because when you when you have women that are married, they have kids, their budget ideas are in other places. Um, they are not interested so much in buying a stereo. They're more concerned about ballet shoes for their daughter 
uh, football helmets for their sons and that kind of stuff. So, so maybe I misread uh, your so, so, line yeah. there because uh, I'm not young, yeah, okay, so, and I like live yeah, music, right. and I like good yeah, live music, yeah. and I've got, you know, I can spend money yeah. occasionally, but so that's what yeah. I was curious. Yeah, so really it's, it's more, you know, I, I just think about women are a little bit more budget conscious when their kids are being raised, and I get that, like, and I'm, I'm fortunate my wife and I are usually on the same page with that kind of stuff. Um, but, but yeah, you're talking yeah. about the men, they're older, they yeah. can't afford it now. Yeah, There's a lot of women like that yeah. too. Yeah. Have you ever worked with uh, new home builders? You said you could build a speaker in a wall. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so uh, a company like Schubert Mitchell is not gonna be a company that I'm gonna be able to work with yet. I'm hoping to figure out that relationship to see if we can be profitable for, for one another. And I've, I've gotten to know Joe Harris, the CEO, a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to slowly uh, foster that relationship. Um, I've talked to a couple of high-end home builders, and like Gunnar Neosho, and we're very interested in trying to make those partnerships happen. So we just need to, once again, that, that comes down to, to relate, fostering that relationship. Um, and so we're working on that. But I love when people are building homes. That's a great time. If I can see the studs, that means I can run the wires really easily. And it's a great time to do it. Um, it's, it's more time consuming than you might think, um, but it, it's great. And you're gonna have some really great results off of that. So if you look at my uh, Facebook page, just yesterday I posted a lot of stuff. There's a new home that's being put up. And I've got some of the speakers in, but some, some of the surfaces are still yet to be painted. So we've got the holes cut, but we're still waiting for that, that to be painted. But there's some really cool pictures uh, that I posted yesterday from a, a brand new home. So, yeah. Awesome. Paris Ryan, great presentation. Thanks. Uh, really enjoyed the whole thing. Like, seriously, I want to take you out to lunch awesome. to just learn more about your experience and a thousand other things. Okay. Just because I'm just interested awesome. in the way that you presented it. It was really good. Awesome. My first question is, explain to me about the inability to sell online. Um, so, a lot of that just comes down to licensing, I think. Um, but it's the amount that you're going to have to pay in. Like, so, let's, let's look at, one of my companies is Blue Sound, okay? Blue Sound is, owned, it's a, it's a marriage between NAD Electronics and PSP loudspeakers. Their parent company is Lindbrook, okay? So, I can go online and I can look up bluesound.com and I can look at their products and I can order stuff directly from them, all right? Now, I was, I was just talking to my rep about this yesterday uh, with them and I, I said, I'm frustrated at that. <laughs> and he goes, he said, so that bluesound.com is not actually owned by Lindbrook or Bluesound or he said that's a separate entity that they dedicated their site to Bluesound they buy only Blue Sound products, and they buy a lot of them. And he goes, and you're not allowed to sell it. <laughs> so, okay. so that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm dealing with. You know, now Crutchfield, that's another really big company. They can buy huge amounts of product. You know, and they'll they'll sell to a guy in South America. I don't know how they get to his house to help that guy, but they'll do it. You know, so. So yeah. question on that, and I got two other theories, but so. To me, the greatest advantage you have in your company is your ability to captivate, to story tell, right. to bring your full lifelong knowledge to the table. Could you build, so like one of my concerns, if, if, what objections I would have, um, I, the, the price range, but then it also just feels daunting and it feels complicated. And then yeah. even going and shopping with you, like I would trust you, but it, I mean, there's like this burden of, I don't even know where to start with this. Is there a way that you could create your five packages. Obviously they're customizable, yeah. but then yeah. you could sell your five packages, leave those names out of it, which is their loss, or you could okay. include them. Okay. And then now all of a sudden, you're, you're almost private labeling. Okay, um, no, but I get what you're saying. You, yeah. I, mean, you, I mean, and I don't know from e-commerce, but even listing those out there on Facebook or Marketplace or things like that, that's kind of the way around it. Okay. It's just don't mention that, and it's your packages with your expertise and your skill set, and you're selling yourself as much as anything. Right, right. No, that sounds really cool. I it was one of the workaround theories that I had. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that 
I would say like you, you are, I can tell you, you've taught and spoke like, I went like great job on Google Analytics. You're, you're pulling up the top there, your Facebook page, there's a lot of content. But like, I will tell you if you could like, and I know video is not fun, it is more difficult. Um, but even if like once a month, you could start branding yourself as Ryan the sound guy and telling the stories. You help this situation, um, or this new thing is coming out on this high end, um, but I can get you something comparable for this amount. I don't know if this one offers it. No, you're good. I was messing with it. This one I'm wild. Like I apologize. Oh, no, you're great. You're great. Um, but, like, if you could be willing to to be just story sells, and you have an ability and a history to tell an amazing story. Um, and then all of a sudden, those are videos that are easier to share and to be branding yourself through um, that you're the local area sound guy that you can do the billion dollar package, or we can also transform your living room for $10,000. Right. Um, but I, I would challenge you to make content because dude, you you yourself is, is gold in my opinion. Well, I've been I've been kind of told that and I, I don't know I'm I have a hard time seeing myself as the product <laughs> that's being sold um, and a lot of that comes up like I've been scolded by several of my networking partners with how little I charge for labor they're like you have to be charging more and I'm like I don't I don't know I don't feel good about that I'm so used I still have an education mindset like I worked 60 uh, 60 to 80 hours a week on a teacher's salary. And they didn't give me extra money to help a kid, you know? So my, my, my goal is always, just, I just want to help people. I want people to understand something. So when I had a client call me up, that we, I installed a couple of systems for him, and he's like, I'm having problems. I went down to his house, I'm not gonna charge him for that, you know? Let's get, like, I didn't sell you a paperweight, I sold you a system for you to use. And if I didn't do my job, on training you well enough that I need to go back and train you, you know. And I and I have I have a client that uh, was selling a house. Uh, she had had a system installed 13 years ago, and well, this is this is three years ago, so 16 years ago, hey, whatever. Um, but thirty thousand dollar system. They they tried to work it for about a year and a half. Once in a while, her son would come to town and, and like turn the right knob and things would work. And so the problem with that was she and her husband didn't have the tech savvy to deal with what was sold to them. And so, you know, I she's trying to sell the house, the realtor said, hey, can we get some music playing? Like, yeah, cool. So I, I set it up and I, I did some stuff, showed her how to run the system, and she said, wow, I would have really enjoyed that for the last 13 years. So that's yeah. what I want to push yeah. back on. So, where, so to me, you yourself, is 10 times more valuable than any product you'll ever sell. Right. And, and to me, that's what you should be marketing. Yes. Um, it is, you, especially with those those clients. Yeah. Um, because if you're at that level, either you or you've got a connection, you can go and find some online, do the reviews, purchase it, find someone to come and set it up. That does not mean you're gonna get premium sound quality. Right. So I, I would personally, yeah, what, whatever you've got to do to increase that rate or whatever, but from the marketing of it, I would be pushing you, your skill set, and I think you're gold. Um, the only last thing that I had, and it's kind of what everyone is saying, I would just want to double down on it. There, there's a referral concept that I keep hearing. Go after the realtors, go after these people. Um, if you could increase your rates, which I think you're worth, um, then to me, could you give a 2% referral rate to all the high-end contractors, to all the, go find the people that already have the networks and the reputations and the names in those kind of industries. And here's my business card, here's what I do, here's my story. But if you do recommend me, I'll give you a 2% kickback. Okay, and I'm glad you're like throwing out a number like that because that's something that I've thought about doing, but I'm like, well, how? What? what's the number? I don't even know. Like 2%. If, if you're selling a $10,000 package and all I gotta do is throw a business card out there, I'd be happy with 1% personally. Okay. Um, right. But yeah. yeah. So I'm glad he mentioned like the fact that you're the you're the product, Ryan, um, because I was thinking the whole presentation about how um, you come across and you present yourself, and how that meshes with people who have a million dollars to spend on their system. Like how how do they know from 
working or interacting with you that you're, you have the skill set, you're able to do those sort of things. I'm not sure I'm verbalizing that super well, but okay. I, I think, I don't know. I think that you have to do some things in order that they're going to trust you yeah. with that million dollar system. I don't right. know what those things are necessarily, yeah. but I, I feel like I'm Just buying a hundred thousand dollar system doesn't right. mean it's going to sound good. Right. right. Like right. you're the you missing factor in that. You're a subject matter expert. You've done <laughs> this <laughs> for 20 years. Yeah. You've stood in front of those orchestras. You know yeah. what it sounds supposed to sound like. Okay. But how do they you know that? Like, right. How do they know that? What are your reviews? Like, do you have people you're putting your systems in? Are you getting a video review of them? Are they like, what, what's okay. happening with that? So I don't have like a lot of advice, but that's the whole thing I was thinking during most of your presentation is that you're you are the product. So how do you get people to to okay. trust that, want that, need right. that? So okay. yeah. Great. Are you new for the HPA? No. What was that question? High end HPA? No. no. Um, H well, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. If you think maybe you should, okay. they build some pretty nice houses out there. That some of that has to do with marketing in general, like yeah. working with a marketing team or a company. Yeah, or like it, it, yeah, that's that's been one of those things that I've struggled with because I, my experience so far is I've only had one marketing thing that I've done that I think has actually made some progress for me. So like yeah. you said, talk about my Google Analytics, that has nothing to do with me and has everything to do with names and numbers. Okay, they they crushed it on that. And so, like when people look up audio around here, like I'm, I'm doing pretty well on the search. You are, you're, you're number one organic, yeah. but that's so, huge though. Yeah. 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 So that's that's good, but at the same time, you know, um, there's, I my perception that I that I, from my experience is there's a lot of over promise under deliver in marketing. Yeah. So I, I get very concerned about that. I'm yeah. very protective about the marketing dollars. So, yeah. Ryan, is there a way, and I, does it translate well to sound difference? Like, can you record off of no. a Walmart and then go into your theater? No. Um, maybe this much, um, but literally, you're listening to it on this, yeah. right? And so, you're not going to hear a lot of difference. So, um, it's, it's really funny. I've, I'm, I'm enough of a high-end nerd that I actually go in and watch videos of people talking about their high-end system. And a lot of guys was like, hey, look at my $30,000 turntable, and they drop the needle on it, and they got $80,000 speakers, and I'm like, okay, but I'm listening to through my cell phone. Yeah. It, it doesn't sound like like you just spent <coughs> over 100 grand on this system. It, it sounds like my cell phone. <laughs> and so, you know, there's there's maybe a little bit more clarity, but that's not it, so, yeah. So I was curious, um, do you have, is there a way that uh, what you do can be in a coop system where, my thing is how do you get in front of the most people to experience that? Is that something that could be created in some kind of a sound booth that could be at, trade shows or those things yeah. where you have a lot of foot traffic. Like me personally, that's what I told uh, Kavanaugh, is like, I can't, I think I have a hearing of a dog. Like high pitch <laughs> nerve noises, like Brad was watching a movie last night. We don't have any fancy examples from this yeah. coming on the TV. But this high pitched noises yeah. that they put on these action movies, like I literally want to crawl. Like is that something that a good sound system could fix? Because <laughs> I am like, could you turn that off? That's not really great. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if it's just my hearing is just very sensitive. Yeah, but it's, yeah it's, uh, it's probably not your hearing so much as, as the equipment. Yeah. Um, like, it, no, should no, always, no. it should always be comfortable. <laughs> it, there, it should always be about listening comfort, right. you know? Um, and so, like, your sound bars are on edge or whatever, and, and you just, it's hard to enjoy. But, that, I was but, but yeah, good. trade shows. So, um, you know, like, I, I was talking to Kevin on because I did the, uh, I did second, Second Tuesday, Tuesday. Second yeah. Tuesday. Second Tuesday yeah. uh, my first year in business. It was like I couldn't. I, I sat there. I was like, I can't take this equipment out to the street and plug it in, and it translates anyway. Because a lot of audio requires wall reflection, floor reflections, ceiling reflections. I can't reproduce that in a large space. Um, with the Four States Record Show, my first 
the first couple of those record shows, I took the systems out there and we played them and guys were walking by that. They're like, that sounds really cool, you know? But it still wasn't, it wasn't capturing people the way I wanted it to. And so the next trade, next record show, I just took my turntables up, I set three of them out on the table and I sold two of them, you know? And the first trade show, the first two shows didn't sell anything. And so dealer is like, oh, Cool, turntable, $500, that's, that's the range I wanted to be in. There you go, you know? And so we did that. Um, so I, I, had to be, I had to be careful about that because really a lot of high-end electronics and speakers, home systems are designed for the home. And, and I've had people say, well, why don't you bring out a system and play in a space like this? It's like, this is not the space for that system. There's like optimal ways to listen to that. And, and you wanna present in the optimal way. And so I can't just like go do it just anywhere. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have any updates?